Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 5 of our F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, this weekend we're back here in the sunshine state of Miami here in the US Grand Prix. Of course, if you missed out on the two videos that went live yesterday, including the Baku Sprint Race weekend uh, that went live earlier on yesterday evening, I would highly recommend going back and checking them out. But yeah, today though, the Miami Gardens make their return, of course, after debut inside F122. We've got a lot of things going on uh, behind the scenes. Sadly, no further upgrades going onto the car uh, ready for this weekend, but we are busy, busy, busy trying to make sure we are getting upgrades onto the car there. Another aerodynamic upgrade will be on ready for Monaco. I don't think we can do any others, though, at the moment. Haven't quite got enough R&D points. Uh, there we go. We can go with a turbo improved materials upgrade as well. But yeah, just under $4 million uh, sat in the bankers as well so we need to start making some facility upgrades here on f122 uh, f123 sorry even i should say um i don't know whether it's worth trying to go with the resource point upgrades first or as we are earning a lot of r d whether it's worth trying to get the simultaneous upgrades there so we'll, we'll try that first of all of course aerodynamics very very important on f123 so far we are learning and we might just be able to do uh, there we go we can do another upgrade as well somewhere else so we'll go with a chassis quality control upgrade as well then we'll go with a build time there so we're putting some money you know into the team putting some initial investment if you will but yeah of course if you're new around here make sure you leave a like get yourself subscribed as well click that notification bell uh, for daily formula 123 content as previously mentioned we are going to be doing daily videos of this series until we win that world championship so let's get into it though ready for the miami grand prix Right, well, here we are then, back in Miami once again. Then, oh, immediately, it's always a reassuring start to a weekend when I lock the rears at the very first time of asking. But, yeah, I must admit, I'm looking forward to coming back to Miami again. I can't imagine we're going to see any major track changes to this venue, of course, inside F123. Of course, a new track on F122, but that hype is now gone. Of course, Miami now... Oh, <laughs> Uh, is obviously now just a, a boring old circuit that you've got to race on, of course, uh, every single season. So, yeah, let, let's see how we get on this weekend, as that is some understeer already. Might need a bit more wing. we rounding our way through the final couple of turns. I tell you what, for a little bit rusty early on on the lap, the rest of it's been pretty nicely hooked up. So, clearly, the setup isn't too bad. And there we go, purple score immediately. I mean, the real question I'm sure everyone is asking here in Miami is, is that curbing through the middle sector still OP when you can hop over it? Of course, we know how much more difficult it is to actually ride curbs on F123 consistently. We'll definitely struggle with that through the first sector around this venue. But yeah, can we still attack that curb? Yes, we can. Not quite to the same effect there perfectly, but... It's going to give us a big fighting chance this weekend, of course. The AI, again, it's another track where they're quite strong, apart from that one corner. So we'll wait and see. And out of the final turn, very, very close on the Delta. But it is another purple score. Well, coming towards the end, then, of my race sim run. This has been pretty successful as an endeavour goes. Got to make sure, though, I put a load of fresh components into the car this weekend. Basically going to go with a full fresh power unit for qualifying, but purple, purple, purple. It has pretty much been the perfect start to the weekend here in Miami. Well, fresh power unit into the back of the car, but I thought Fittipaldi's pace in practice looked quite promising, but apparently not so much there. Teammate has set a 129.7 as a banker, and he's only currently down in P20. We're just about to start our first lap. So, oh, there we go. Everyone else now has done a lap, and Fittipaldi is slowest of all. So, yeah, our young Brazilian teammate, of course, had a bit of a nightmare yesterday uh, in Baku. I'm hoping he can bounce back this weekend, but... We can put another one on him. Go 3-2 up in qualifying. I would take it. 
so much of the track time around here that was just going to be oh, how much Kirby can take through there. That one was not perfect. Definitely bottomed out over the middle. So it's still a risk to take that curb on F123 more than it was on last year's game. But you can see pretty much even uh, with Yuki Tsunoda. And we've been pretty good through Sector 3 as well so far this weekend. Trying to run a slightly lower downforce concept and seeing how that pays dividends for us. Breaking at the 100 meter board. Slight bit of front locking as we really slow the car down there of course as the aero washes off the front end but up towards the finish line then first lap on the board 29-1 we go p14 okay we've got a chance the other car then out for a run here towards the end of qualifying but we have got a genuine possibility of making it into q2 for the first time in this series we might just need to try and take a bit of risk of course to try and continue improving at the same rate the AI have done. Um, we, it was also a pretty good opening lap, to be completely honest. There wasn't much time left on the table anywhere. So we're just going to have to try and risk it. And really push on here, see if we can find anything more. As you can see already, back end trying to snap round on the loud pedal through turn one there. Tiny fraction down as we head out of the first couple of turns, but still pretty much there. Got to be very, very careful. You can easily bottom out over these curbs through here. You can see how Charles Leclerc made the mistake he did but just being a little bit braver on entry get the car still slowed down and through that apex as other cars are improving yuki sonoda goes up into p14 but we're a further two tenths up as we head out onto the back straight kind of if you will a uh, load of other cars though joe guanyu and bottas unable to go any faster just behind us will we see any other big movement though from some of the other in quote back marker cars as we wind our way through just trying to keep it planted and tidy and everything like that again. Bottoming out over that curbing a little bit more than I would have wanted. But I think we've done it. I think we're into Q2 then for the Miami Grand Prix Purple in the middle sector as well. That goes to show just how much curb you can take still against the AI. But as we, yeah, we wind our way up towards the finish line then. Everyone else has finished their runs. We may as well see what the time can be anyway. And I, hopefully any front locking. Tiny bit of a snag of the brakes, but definitely better than we did last time. That corner now actually fun when you get it hooked up half a second improvement though up towards the line where are we gonna go it's p9 at the end of q1 and would you look at that charles leclerc fastest are ahead of sergio perez but we go p9 at the end of q1 here for the miami grand prix uh enzo fittipaldi now 1.1 seconds slower than myself so unable to improve at the end of the session zhou guan Yu sneaks by though into q2 uh lance stroll just like in real life there out in Q1 as well here in Miami. So a bit of a mixed up uh, at the start of the weekend. But could we go from Q1 out and suddenly just launch ourselves into Q3? Right, well, we have only got one shot here in Q2, of course, after using two sets of tyres in the first session. So we're just going to try and go all out. Not convinced we'll make Q3. Uh, I haven't even looked at the times that the AI have done, to be honest, because I just want to go out there and absolutely just throw this thing around the Miami Gardens. It's an incredible feeling to make it into Q2 for the first time, but will we get any higher than P16? Well, you've got to be cheeky over that curb. I know a lot of people won't like it, but with the advantage the AI have in some places, I'm absolutely going to take the human advantage where I can. One more proper corner to go then here in qualifying, and we might still be able to put this thing higher than P16 at the final corner, up towards the start-finish line. What is the time going to be? 28.6 there. Uh, I can't actually see. My my head's in the way. P13. Unlucky for some. Hopefully not us. Look at that. We were still only two tenths away at the end of Q2 there, making it potentially into Q3 for the first time. But it is both Ferraris, both Red Bulls, both Mercedes, both Alpines, and both McLarens into Q3 then. Quicker than Fernando Alonso in his Aston Martin. We will absolutely take it. But dare I say, points... Points today might be possible. Can we finally break our duct? Welcome to the Magic City. We're here at the Miami International Autodrome, the home of the Hard Rock Stadium, a multi-purpose sports and entertainment hub which has hosted Super Bowls, Baseball World Series, numerous rock concerts, and of course, as of 2022, Formula One. With great opportunities for wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles featuring 19 corners, 3.36 miles long, and expected average speeds of 138 miles an hour, the Miami International Autodrome Autodrome will be sure to create lots of chances to overtake.
it's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. It's Sergio Perez on pole today, and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Sainz, Hamilton, Russell, Norris, Ocon, Gasly, Oscar Piastri, Hulkenberg, Joe, Mr. Monaco, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Albon, Bottas, Stroll, Magnussen, Sargent, De Vries, Sargent. And now it's time to head down to the track. It's just about time to go down to the track for the beginning of the race. But before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tyres, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Well, we know just how big an effect strategy can have here inside F123. I'm really looking forward to this, though, the Miami Grand Prix. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping it doesn't go badly wrong for us today. But, yeah, starting P13, we've got our best opportunity so far of the season to try and fight for points. Looks like the one stop is going to be the way to go. Um, but maybe, maybe if, if it comes to it, we could try and gamble it on a different strategy. I'll be honest, I think this is the most nervous I've been for a race so far this season here on F123. We've done very, very well early on in the campaign, but this is a big, big opportunity. Then purple on the lineup, ready for the start of the Miami Grand Prix there. Zhou Guan Yu, Nico Hulkenberg just in front, Alonso and Sonoda just behind us. But as always, DRS. DRS is going to make the difference today. Waiting on the grid, though, ready for the five red lights for the Miami GP. Long hold, but lights out, and away we go. And just mashing the throttle down slightly there. Oscar Piastri, look at that, like a scalded cat. Down in towards turn one, and we're just getting barged around there. Alonso down the inside, Yuki Sonoda trying to find room around the outside there. And we have lost one place off the start, just nowhere to go as Alonso will try and get past Joe Guanyu as well then. And yeah, you can see the Alfa Romeo really struggling off the first couple of corners. So we haven't lost anything in the whole process there. Still in P13 as we wind our way through, but heavy fuel in the car early on feels very, very different, understandably, to how you would expect it to feel from qualifying there. It's all nudging the wall slightly as we head out onto the back straight. That's how hard we're immediately having to push at the start of this GP. As you can already see, straight line speed then. We're at a bit of a deficit down this back straight there, at least against Alonso in front. Just here comes Zhou Guanyu trying to look to the inside. Try and hook it up around the outside there later on the brakes. Wheel to wheel stuff with the young Chinese driver as we wind our way through this complicated and technical middle sector there. But yeah, not able to hook it up around the outside. Huge Constantina and up, of course, as we head through the chicane on lap one. Looks like Charles Leclerc, though, has taken the lead away from Max Verstappen at the front of the field. Of course, the Dutchman, a pretty perfect weekend last time out in Baku. So I'm sure we'll be wanting to try and continue building up his lead in the championship. But Charlie Boy, on the other hand, I'm sure wanted to do everything within his power to not allow that. Down the inside of Fernando Alonso will go. And look at that by the end of lap one. We have made net progress then. Up into P12 we go. And Esteban Ocon, right there is Esteban Ocon. And that holy grail that is points. We are having to use so much battery early on in this GP. We know how important the DRS is on F123, so just trying to hang Whoa, close to Nico Hulkenberg. They're big rear locking down at Turn 1, and that might compromise us. It very much does feel early on like we are hanging on by the coattails to Nico Hulkenberg and Esteban Ocon just in front of us. Seems to be more battles going on in front of them, but Alonso able to hang inside my DRS as well. Seem to really struggle uh, off the start. Both Aston Martins uh, had a bit of a torrid qualifying session, but yeah, it's just about trying to stay with Hulkenberg early on here, working out where we're quick, where we're not, and just trying to work out how we can use that to our advantage. We're only on lap five, but already I feel like I'm giving it everything we've got. Oh, well, we might have been able to hang on in qualifying, but I think Alonso, yep, we're not going to get to the DRS, and Alonso seems to have already found a way past me there, so just can't put the power down 
early on, especially through the S's, but will the Spaniards be able to drag us up to Hulkenberg, or will we likely see him as well just break free from myself? It's all still mind games. We learnt so much in Albert Park, and that race practically went perfectly for us in terms of using the AI and the DRS, so I'm hoping we can try and incorporate that more. I mean, look at that, though, immediately Alonso has broken out of the range, so we're just dropping backwards early on. You know, it's that whole belief of whether points could make prizes today, but at the moment it's just looking like qualifying was a bit of a miracle for us. So you can see another one, Joe Guan Yu this time around, having a look down the inside, and it just costs us both time as we try and hang close. Already getting a bit worried as well that tyre strategy, we might have just shredded through this set of mediums a lot earlier on than I'd really wanted to either. I think we're just completely overdriving the car so far this weekend, so I'm tempted now immediately then just to throw caution to the wind and try and gamble it onto a set of soft compound tyres there. Whether we then can do double soft to the end probably is a bit too difficult, um, but maybe we can try and go soft then another set of mediums towards the end, but yeah, I feel like we've done what we did in the back of sprint, just overdriving the car way too much early on. And of course... Sorry? didn't realise I got a warning there. I also don't realise how I've managed to get around the outside of Zhou Guan Yu again, but yeah, it's all getting a little bit messy at the moment. Yeah, I'm thinking what we do. Box the end of this one, go onto those soft compound tyres, potentially undercut our way into that group of cars, and then really pray for a safety car or something like that. It's three wide, so we head down the back straight there. Zhou Guan Yu, like a sitting duck, he's not going to give up on it though. Lance Stroll on the outside. Somehow no contact with either of them, but yeah, this is definitely not a battle... I want to get too invested in at the moment, so a little bit of a potentially poor strategy, but could really work for us as well this afternoon. You never quite know on F123, but yeah, we're going to come out then in quite a lot of clear air, but yeah, the real focus is just get our head down, get some good laps on the board, and try and see how long we can take these soft compound tyres. No! Four second stop as well. It just can't. It just goes from bad to worse. There we go. One of the Red Bulls peeling into the pit lane then. Not long after we have, but we're taking so much time out of the likes of DeFries and Fittipaldi. Six seconds since I re-emerged from the pit lane then. So clearly, despite losing a couple of seconds from the botched pit stop, we should still gain some time here. As it'd be nice to know if that Red Bull is two stopping, to be honest. I guess they could be. That gives us a little bit of hope, of course, uh, that it's not a completely useless strategy this afternoon. But yeah, it's so, so difficult. The management on this game is very, very fun and unique. Uh, but it is still taking some getting used to. But the only way we can do that is by doing more races. It's kind of mental how quickly we've caught up to Fittipaldi and DeFries there. I completely get they have been battling a lot. But yeah, the fact we've made up nearly an entire pit stop in the space of about four laps or so is ridiculous. He's going to make strategy on this game so interesting there, but still no AI peeling into the pit lane. We're just making sure we try and look after these tyres a lot better than we did on the first in. Oh, no. I honestly thought Vitipaldi would have to give to freeze the room there, but he cuts in in front of him. Plenty of contact with the Alpha Tauri to try and get rained in through the first couple of turns, but... Mark apparently a fan of that one, but yeah, I thought DeFries would be able to get later on the brakes because Fittipaldi wouldn't cut him off. Let's try and just get past our teammate as well, though, as quickly as possible. As you can just see the amount of extra grip we've got at the moment, the grip premium here in Miami. It's still a very, very low grip surface around a lot of this venue. As you can see now, yeah, this should be a pretty easy done deal on Fittipaldi. It'd be nice if he just jumped out of the way. We will swoop around the outside, though. He's going to really squeeze me. Up towards the wall still, but we're through. And up into P20 once again. Okay, so Bottas then has been able to take the soft tyres all the way to the end of lap 12. Hasn't done it very well, but does still give us the possibility then. We can get to the end of lap 18 here. Uh, we could then do double softs to the end of the GP. Still not sure whether I'm going to do soft or medium, but that gives me a little bit of hope. Do not want to be sat behind Logan Sargent too long this afternoon as down the inside of the local boy will go. Look at that, actually gives me some room. There's someone heading out of the pit lane then. That's Carlos Sainz heading out of the pit. So, yeah, we've done clearly done well then. In fact, we've been able to undercut our way up towards a Ferrari. I know we've obviously got a pit again before the end of this, but you know what? Depending on how well we keep these tyres in good shape, 
as Sonic's there will immediately slip by. We, the points might still be on. Don't really want to try and go for a move on Sonic, to be honest. If I can just hang on to him, I'd be happy. Um, but it looks like I'm not really going to get a say on the matter. I'll try and have a look. Oh, Sainz, come on. You've got to give me some room, my friend. We're giving you the inside line. Well, don't don't cook the tyres. Hello's somewhere. Don't know if that's in front or behind us. Okay, it looks to be in front. Someone's got issues. It looks to be one of the Alpines going slowly. Is that Ocon? Is that Pierre Gasly? He seems to be grinding to a halt out of the final corner. Um, it is... Pierre Gasly out of the Miami Grand Prix then as that Alpine car goes up in flames. I was a little bit scared about where he'd sit on the apex there, but it, that would be the perfect time for a safety car for us. Absolutely perfect time for a safety car, but it looks like it's not going to happen. More cars peeling into the pit lane. I don't think... No, we're not quite going to be in the top 10 just yet. Into P11 actually, Mark, as Lewis Hamilton will re-emerge just in front. Magnussen though. Whoa! Kevin Magnussen clearly wanted to be ahead of the Mercedes there just for a brief moment. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're doing all right still. It really is going to be how hard we can push in the final laps of this race. Hamilton, though, muscling his way to the outside of Kevin Magnussen. will be fully in front before we get down to the end of the back straight. So I'm just trying to use Kevin as best as possible for the DRS here. But oh, we got Lando Norris, I think, trying to have a look around the outside very, very aggressively will cut off any opportunity there for the McLaren. But yeah, can we take these tyres another two laps until the end of 18 and then go soft to the end? They definitely are feeling like they're falling off slightly, but it could be so worth it late on there. We could be so, so quick in the dying stage of this race as alongside Kevin Magnussen we go. That NASCAR, not a bad performer down the straights, but not quite as good, of course, aided along by the DRS. And now I think Lando Norris is going to sneak by. I keep pressing the radio rather than my tyre strategy there. So Lando Norris will make it through. Oh. Okay. I don't remember saying that, but we'll take it. I don't even know what microphone it's picking up on. I didn't realise I had a microphone plugged into this PC. George Orwell wouldn't have fun with that. But yeah, we are going to try and gamble it then. Soft tyres to the end. Uh, we haven't got any new sets of softs. Oh, that's a shame. I mean, they'll have only done one or two laps on them, but this was a new set. So I think what we'll do, we'll box at the end of this one and go mediums to the end of the GP. Still can't believe, despite all of this, that we never ended up getting ourselves inside the top 10. Uh, George Russell there, 4.3 seconds up the road. But where can we finish in this GP? This is the big question at the moment still. We're going to be very, very fast towards the end of the day, but... Will it be fast enough to score us our first points of the year? Only time will tell. Still could get a safety car uh, that could really change absolutely everything then. But we're going to re-emerge right down towards the rear of the field once again. So yeah, tyre strategy really does come into it on F123 as Alex Albon, I think, is he going softs to the end? Albon then, so he's trying to stretch out those tyres as best as possible. No! More tyre issues. We've lost another couple of seconds because of that. And now we've just got to get on with it. P19, we've re-emerged. Magnussen as well diving it in. So he's going soft to the end as well. But I've only got to hope that our medians last a bit better. And here comes Kevin Magnussen as well down the inside. Don't really want to fall behind him. But I don't think we're going to get much say on the matter again. Let's let him use his soft compound tyres to drag us a bit further up. So is Fittipaldi still not pit then in this race? Don't say I've done two pit stops. I think, yeah, Fittipaldi hadn't pit yet in this Grand Prix. So he's got incredibly aggressive. We'll try and take a set of softs to the end. But if he's been able to go that far on mediums, I absolutely can see that working for him. But yeah, for us, I'm still just trying to work out where the points are at the moment. I think it's those Alfa Romeos. We're not that far away. There we go. Just goes to show how ridiculous this race has been so far. Kevin Magnussen, new fastest lap of the day. We were only a tenth away there from Kevin, so maybe we can try and snooker away fastest lap. I mean, Fittipaldi could legitimately get fastest lap bonus point here. This, this race has really been odd. Magnussen finding his way then past Logan Sargent late on in the afternoon. We're now all over the back of the Williams as well then. But there's just so many different races going on at the moment. So many different strategies coming into play is, oh, Sergeant, you can't move around the braking zone like that, my friend. Down the inside will go. Uh, but yeah, we're all closing in on a lot of whoa, other cars. Don't start doing that, Matt. That's how we destroy tyres inside F123 there. As Sergeant 
I knew he'd have to bail out. I knew he'd have to be earlier on the break, so I haven't the confidence to get around the outside there. But, yeah, you can see Sonoda, Albon now. The next two cars that are really struggling on their strategy. But where, I mean, now looking at it on the mini-map, I think it's those McLarens that are at the bottom of the top ten. We've only got eight laps to go, but the gaps are coming down rapidly. Magnussen to the outside. Albon to the outside of Yuki Sonoda. As we get towards the end of the back straight, can we try and find a way into this? We'll try and have a look down the inside of Magnussen, who, tiny bit of contact, jumps out of the way there. Wouldn't see that very often from the Dane, but you know what? We'll take it. Look how slow Sonoda is on his old set of hard compound tyres. Get on with it, man. It's like touring car racing as we head through the slowest part of the circuit, but Sonoda... Superior traction off the corner. He's got DRS as well, but I need to get past him. This might be why Albon has been so slow over the last couple of laps to the outside of Lil Yuki. Surely we can slow it down around the outside there. You just get that faint moment when you're worried the brakes aren't going to work the way you're expecting, but around the outside we'll go. And remember to P16. Now trying to have a look past Nico Hulkenberg then in this race, so he very much was stuck behind that uh, Alpha Tauri car there as Hulkenberg... Again, not going to have much of a say on the matter. Has definitely seemed to struggle late on in the races. So we're just going to have to sit back, be patient for now. Yeah, it's just so, so weird. Maybe Albon's the key. Trying to drag me a little bit further up the roster, as you can just see there. How slow Hulkenberg's going. Try and use the battery off the corner again. These are critical moves in this race. You know, one lap stuck behind a car can really, really have big ramifications come the end of the afternoon, as we're going to have to look for it. To the inside of Nico Hulkenberg. A little bit of second guessing ourselves there. Tiny bit of contact with Alex Albon's gearbox, but no harm, no foul. And yeah, we've got to use Albon still. Drag me further, my friend, as the point's now about seven seconds away with six laps to go. There goes Hulkenberg, though, back up the inside at one. Should be able to hook it up around the outside of him, though. Yep, easy dubs. Now I think Albon's starting to struggle again on his soft compound tyres here. We're going to try and have a look to the inside of the Williams. We're no longer going to get DRS assistance if we complete this move, but, I mean, yeah, this lap we've taken close to three seconds at a Zhou Guan Yu, so definitely the McLaren as well is struggling, but it's just a question of who's going quick, and are they able to make moves there, as I think they're three wide down at turn one on the mini-map. This is not over. Norris and Zhou Guan Yu, they both were on the hard compound tyres, so they're really starting to struggle towards the end of this GP. have gone a long way on not a particularly great compound and you can see that gap now two seconds another lap where we've taken a big chunk of time out of them but it's the other Alfa Romeo and the Aston Martin a last stroll that I'm really invested in and look at that end of 25 I mean we need to try and get around these two as quickly as possible there we've got to try and go for a run on Zhou Guan Yu in towards turn one otherwise we're just going to start losing too much time down the inside will go of the Alfa Romeo now Sit close behind Lando and try and utilise the DRS down the back straight. Oh, <laughs> we are pushing. Down the inside of Lando. It's a big send. It's a massive send there, but we've kept it between the white lines. And I just did not want to be sat behind him through this complicated sector. You can see the gap to stroll six seconds up the road. That is the gap between us and points with three laps to go. But how are his soft compound tyres hanging on? He's battling the other McLaren of Oscar Piastri. Come on! Oh, Piastri's set of the hard compound tyres are absolutely not providing him with much pace anymore. But we need to try and get around Bottas before we can even think about that. I mean, look at the grip we've got there down the inside of the Alfa Romeo. And into 11th place then of the Miami GP. That gap to Piastri, four seconds up the road, two laps to go, and we're going about two seconds a lap faster. This is going to come down to the wire. Piastri's hard tyres might be giving up the ghost, but our mediums are not in much better shape, to be honest. I mean, look at that. Look how much we're trying to push just to put the power down out of the final corner. Three seconds with one lap to go. The signs are not looking good, but even if we finish 11th, it will be our career best result so far. But so agonisingly close to points. So close. Come on. We've just got to absolutely nail this final lap. But I can't help but think this might just be too little, too late there. Oscar Piastri, that McLaren's hard tyres. Like I said, are bleeding towards the end there. As well. We just bobble over the kerb, try and keep it 
on the white line there, of course, where the grip is, but I don't think we've got it unless someone has a mechanical failure up the road on this final lap, which has happened quite a lot inside F123. I've gone and clicked the wrong button again. Um, but yeah, Oscar Piastri, that gap just floating now around three seconds. Charles Leclerc, second race victory of the year for the Monegas driver there. Won't allow Max Verstappen to continue opening up that gap at the front of the field. And still, we're yet to have a driver win two races in a row. That horrible line, horrible, horrible line through at the chicane on this final lap. But we had the pace all weekend. We unfortunately just took a bit too much out of our medium tyres early on. But I absolutely think the two-stop today was the right way to go about things. Strategy on this game is so dynamic, so interesting and allows for so much great racing there. But in towards the final couple of corners, it's probably the most painful position you can finish in in Formula 1. P11 here in Miami. We will have to wait another day for our first points in this series. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. drive that was to take the win for Ferrari today. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Well, not the result our points leader would have wanted, but it certainly makes things interesting going forward. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Max Verstappen seemed to just effortlessly weave through the other drivers today without a care in the world. He was definitely my driver of choice. Let's move on to the constructors. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Well, that was certainly an exciting weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for more exciting Formula One action very soon. Well, there we are then. The end of the Miami Grand Prix and Charles Leclerc's second race victory of the season there. But Max Verstappen P2 ahead of Russell and Lewis Hamilton. The two-stop for Checo, awarding him fastest lap bonus point, but wasn't quite able to make it work there. He started pole. Yeah, it was down in P5, come the flag. Sites in sick there, Aston Martin. Both drivers actually are doing a very, very good job there. Both halved their grid position in the final race. Result 14th to 7th, 18th to 9th there for those two with Ocon in the middle of the sandwich. Oscar Piastri rounds out our point scorers there and an agonising P11 for ourselves. Fittipaldi, another tough weekend, but did beat out both Alfa Tauri cars. Uh, and obviously Pierre Gassi, the former Alfa Tauri driver, the only one not to see the chequered flag. Championship-wise, though, the gap at the top down to 15 uh, between Charles and Max there. Perez in P3 ahead of Carlos Sainz still, and uh, then with both at Mercedes. And yeah, by virtue of that count back, uh, we're back up to P15 once again then, uh, just behind Kevin Magnussen. Constructors-wise, Red Bull still lead 21 points. The gap uh, closes down to at the top of the table. Aston Martin up ahead of Alpine once again. And yeah, we're still in eighth place then by virtue of that count back as well. But points, they are on the horizon. I feel it. I know it. We are definitely just going to score points very, very soon. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And we will be back later on today when Formula 1 returns to Europe ready for the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix. You guys do not want to miss it.
none of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.